Hello ladies and gents, it's the Beanie 101 here with some Dragon Age Inquisition multiplayer. I've been having a lot of fun with the multiplayer so far. I've played a little bit of the Keeper and I've managed to dismantle enough stuff to be able to craft the Templar armor which has unlocked that class for me. So I've played one or two rounds with the Templar so far. Uh, it seems to be very very similar to the Legionnaire with uh, a couple of differences. So I'm, uh, I've only got a couple of skills at the moment. I have Shield Wall uh, and uh, Blessed Blades, I think it is. What's next? So um, I'm pretty light on skills at the moment, but I'm hoping... Um, oh, there's a Nug. Let's get it. And straight away, we pick up some loot. A healthy chunk of gold there. But compared to the Keeper, the, Le uh, the Legionnaire class and the Templar class is much more up close and personal. I've got a sword and a shield. And we have a wall that we can bash down. Really nice for you to bring one of each class with you. Uh, each class type, meaning, you know, roughly uh, a warrior, a mage, and a rogue, to be able to unlock all of those doors and uh, get some extra loot. And it looks like we picked up an item straight away, which is great. Items are good. And it's nice to see that Bioware are finally releasing some bits and pieces of additional content for Dragon Age multiplayer. There's a few different map types. Um, they've got some of the weekend playlists and challenges which are quite good, especially if you've unlocked a few classes. So they've waited for everyone to get accustomed to how the game plays, uh, what the classes mean, and they've done a little bit of rebalancing, fixed a few bugs here and there. But I'm looking forward uh, to seeing what they do with the rest of the multiplayer in the coming weeks and months. I mean, the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer was supported for pretty much bang on 12 months, so we can expect, hopefully, quite a lot. They, uh, they've they come out and said that they're going to support it as well as the Mass Effect multiplayer, so looking forward to uh, loads of different new classes, some different abilities that you don't even see in the single-player game, uh, which uh, should be a lot of fun. But uh, we're playing on the easiest difficulty on the basis that I'm only level 7. Uh, I've only got a couple of abilities, so I have pretty much the ability to tank um, and get my shield wall up, provided that the enemies aren't too strong around me. This is one bug that I've noticed. You can smash pots and then they, they materialise again straight away. Funny little things. And the one thing that's funny about being a tank is you do have a habit of having to chase around a little bit. You've got all these ranged players uh, that we've got a couple of keepers and an archer with us. So they can, they can just dive right in and get stuck in and cause damage straight away. But no, I need to run around and get in these guys' faces. And it means that normally by the time I run up to them, the buggers are dead already. There is a particularly troubled but... I take all of these sort of games with uh, the right sort of attitude and know what my role is. I hope I play it relatively well. My role is a tank. It's to attract the attention of people and to provide protection for some of my guys that are there to be the main damage dealers, I suppose. But I get the feeling that this Templar class is... Um, a bit of a hybrid. Yes, they can tank, but you can do, uh, looking at some of the skills for the Templar, you can do some really, really, really high spike damage. Um, and you can self-detonate combos, which I think is a useful skill. We'll see if it comes in use. I've got a good idea of what my build is going to be. But if you play as a Templar, let me know. Uh, give me some... Uh, Tips and ideas of what builds you use, what sort of things are effective for you in multiplayer. Most of the time I feel that it's a bit of a grind from what I've played so far. It's a bit of a grind to get some rounds under your belt so that you can start playing the higher difficulties. And then it's all about the gear that you have. You know, uh, I've come to the realisation that there's not much point of unlocking new classes unless you happen to have picked up a decent weapon that facilitates that class. I've got an okay sword at the moment. 
but I've picked up some stuff for uh, that I could potentially use for other classes. Oh yes, we've got another item. That's brilliant. I've picked up some items for other classes that I may be able to unlock later. So I think is it the Canari that wields uh, like the two-handed weapons? I've picked up a really good two-handed hammer that should absolutely make mincemeat of things at lower levels. Um, and also do decent damage. It, it's the best weapon that I've got, and I can't use it because I don't have a class to use it. So rather than melt it down for materials, I am melting down uh, all my other stuff to get materials to unlock that class. And I'm playing around with these melee classes uh, and using the auto-aim, just because uh, I feel that it sometimes gives me a slight better angle for attack. I'm not sure whether that's entirely true, but... I just like the, the look of the game when you're a little bit more up close and personal. Oh, this guy. I'm going to tank this. Nah, no need. Guy's dead. Alright, let's take this archer down. Go on, arrow. Build up my guard. And this is a really good thing that I'm that I've that I've learned quite quickly. Uh, the lower level enemies, let them come at you uh, when you've got guard building abilities. Build up guards with the lower level enemies, and then you should be able to tank a couple more hits when some of the uh, more destructive enemies hit you. So that is the next zone cleared. So all we need to do is go and head on to zone three. Everything has gone swimmingly so far. But I found that you can get to zone 3 and zone 4 quite quickly, and then things escalate. Not long after. Let's get rid of this brute. Let's get the let's get the attention this brute. Come on, mate. Belt, built up plenty of guard there. That was a nice way of taking down the brute. Get his attention. My ranged fighters can start whittling down his health. He started swinging his axe and building guard, but I, uh, as, a, as a team, this I, I like the makeup of this team. Three ranged and me as uh, a tank. But that said, I don't think the Venatori have many magic wielding uh, enemies that can cause you particular problems. It all seems to be a bit more melee based, which is good. Because if I've got three ranged people on my team, they can just uh, crack on and whittle down their health. Oh, another two-hander. But I'm not sure entirely what to make of the Templar class early on. Uh, I feel that you need to get into the skill set uh, a little more. And it, it really takes you for sort of like level 10, level 12. I think when the I, I should be able to get the abilities that I need to really bring the class into its own. Otherwise, you're just basically relying on a good weapon. That said, I feel this sword is tearing down enemies, certainly the lower level enemies, quite nicely on the easiest difficulty. And I do like the shield wall ability. In my single player playthrough, I, um, I haven't played around with many of the characters that use shields. My main character certainly doesn't use a shield. And so... Um, there's a little bit of skill and timing involved with uh, bringing your shield wall up and building guard like that. So uh, it's nice. It reminds me a bit of uh, a bit of Dark Souls when you uh, need to time your shield raises and you need to have enough stamina to be able to block the particular attack. Otherwise, you get staggered. It's it's a it's a nice mechanic that they have obviously shamelessly stolen off Dark Souls, but you know. Good mechanics deserve to be copied. If they work, they work. Sorry, mate. 
So zone 3 is being made easy work of. We found the key already, so we're on to zone 4 now. Easy street. A messenger from a cont loyal to our cause is under attack and requires immediate aid. So we need to help our mates out here. The situation is quite dire. Get over here. It's about time. What took you so long? I need to die. Blessed Blades, I'm not 100% sold on yet as an ability. It gives you a marginal damage boost. I think it's 15%. But I, I don't necessarily know whether, whether it's worth it. I think that the upgrade uh, is potentially worth it a little bit later on because it brings the cooldown down on some of my higher level abilities but as a starting ability you basically pop it and you do a little bit more damage but the gameplay that I'm showing here is really basic right uh, I'm, I'm popping my blessed blades I'm using my shield to tank and build guards but otherwise I'm just running on in and, and causing some damage now we kind of want to do this extra area without alerting any of the extra enemies because otherwise we're going to be in a world of pain because I imagine that when we open this chest yep eliminate the guardians okay so we've got someone to take down it's an arcane horror where's he gone I hate these guys and their ability to auto teleport especially as a melee fighter but I'm not doing uh, I'm not taking much damage because I'm using my shield wall ability to decent effect. And we get an item from that, which is great. So I think that's our third item on this run through, which is pretty good going. Sometimes you go an entire run without picking up an item, which is a shame. Yeah, nice timing on the block there. And the guy's down. Let's take this archer down. Wow, the seeker melted him with that lightning strike. You all did famously. Probably not the best time to pop Blessed Blades, seeing as it was only one fairly low level enemy there. There we go, we finally got it. So here are the enemies. Now's a good time for the Blessed Blades. I say Blessed, is it is it Blessed Blades? Blessed Blades? I don't know, I like to give it a little bit of a... ...nuanced saying and pronunciation. I imagine the characters in Dragon Age would call them Blessed Blades rather than Blessed Blades, but, you know. And that's Zone 4 done, so we're on to Zone 5, and we're on to... I'm, I'm going to say the, the boss, it's not really a boss, it's a mini-boss that you need to take down here, but... In some of my playthroughs so far, we've uh, some of them are easier than others. I think Venatori, what is it? Is it a Knight Commander or something, something like that? It's not seemed too tricky so far. I think that's some of the easier ones. But we place the banner. You are not as bad as I feared. Don't worry, we'll and let's go. Let's uh, Here. hold strong and fast. Here. And take these bastards down. Who's first? Oh. You know what? There's going to be more down here. I probably don't want to go too far away from the rest of my party. But, you know. 
They have, they're on their way. Ah, oh, here we go. The Venatori Commander. This is the main enemy coming up on us now. So let's weaken them a little bit and take some of these lower level enemies out. Venatori Commander can start taking some damage. Only level 5, so I'm level 7 at the moment. I should be able to uh, take her down. I'm, I'm just going to try and take the, her, her attention. Uh, there's no need to do anything crazy here. Make sure that all of her attention is on me rather than anybody else. My Seekers are doing a good job of making sure that I've got Barrier up. And I've got a decent amount of Guard as well. So this is nice. Let's pop this of blades. Oh, where's she gone? Where's she gone? Teleporting around all over the place. I'll take this guy out. Yeah, I timed that all wrong. Oh, but the second strike I did okay with. Still building up plenty of guards down to half health and it looks like I definitely have her attention keep going keep plowing away take that barrier down she's nearly dead she's nearly dead This is relatively straightforward, and we've got barrier, so I'm just going to start wailing away on her now. And she is down. Excellent. So we should only have a few low-level enemies to kill. Uh, any more? Any more? There's a few rounds here. But the main boss is down, which is lovely. We should be able to melt through these enemies. Do you know what? I thought that I had two Seekers with me, but this guy is definitely a Knight Enchanter. That was pretty straightforward from start to finish. So let's see the spoils. We picked up a few items. Let's hope we get something decent. If not, I'm just going to melt it down for materials to build up for uh, crafting my own sort of stuff, be that armor or um, upgrades for my weapons. Because at the moment, I've only got uh, two or three classes unlocked. There's no need for me to keep loads of stuff. And on top of that, we should have earned enough gold to open up a chest. Yes, we've got 930 gold. Longbow of the Partisan. Decent. A Claymore. Decent, but no use for me. Balanced Dagger. No use for me. Yeah, level 7 Arcane Warrior. Wow, look at his kills. 40 kills. Yeah, he, he got a lot. He carried us. I was uh, bottom of the leaderboard. I got 21 sword kills. That's not bad, considering that all these guys were ranged guys that were going to be doing lots more damage than me from range before they were uh, caught up by the enemies. So there's a few things that I can melt down. The Claymore I have no use for, so I'm going to salvage that. Get some Drake Stone, the Balanced Dagger, same thing. Some Bronto Hide, Longbow of the Partisan. Uh, yeah, no real need for me to... Uh, worry about that. So the Mercenary Lord Blade is the blade that I'm using, is the sword that I'm using at the moment. It's a level 6 item. Uh, it's better than the starting sword that you get. So that was why I was able to cause a little bit of damage to those lower level enemies and, uh, and carry myself mm, fairly well. We've got enough gold for a medium chest. So let's see what items we've got. Longbow of Grief. Another Longbow of Grief. Some tonic. Uh, some more armor for our keeper, which... 
I don't know whether that's more armor or whether it's just a different look. But that is our uh, our chest. So uh, I don't think there's yeah. It's the same as any other armor that I've got. It's um, nothing too special. So I won't worry about it too much. It's probably just a slightly different look. And on the weapon side, the Longbow of Grief. I don't need to keep these. I'll just keep with the starting weapon until I decide that I want to use an archer class, which I don't really, I'm not really that fussed about archers. I will leave it as that. So uh, we leveled up. We've got one point to spend. So um, I'm a little bit low on abilities. So I'm considering, certainly at the moment, to take Shield Bash just so that I've got something else that can deal a bit of damage. So I'm going to do that. And then ultimately, uh, is this the ability tree that I want to be in? Sentinel, what's in here? Uh, turn the blade, resilience, 5% stun chance. No, it's it's actually in this divine uh, class. So uh, there is no darkness, bear mauls, the wolves. That's just um, extra constitution. That's extra constitution. This is what I want, Wrath of Heaven. This is the ability that stuns, causes a lot of damage as an AoE, does loads of damage to demons, but then it means that I can trigger stuff uh, by myself with Blessed Blade. Uh, Blessed? No, Spell Purge. Spell Purge. Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought of this uh, Dragon Age uh, multiplayer video. Uh, don't forget to like uh, and subscribe if you want to see some more multiplayer coming your way. Uh, I really enjoyed this round. It was pretty straightforward. Probably going to try one of the higher difficulties next time around and see how we fare there. But thanks ever so much for watching and I'll catch you again next time.